بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا طيبا كثيرا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعما نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الهدى قادة التقاء أما بعد So we have um, three brothers who are in the class and inshallah more will join um, but we will start inshallah um, do some of the brothers want to tell me uh, where you are joining us from? Muhammad Kasuji? No? People are shy? I'll go first. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's Hussein, by the way. Which Hussein? Um, Mizan's cousin. Oh, okay. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you? Are you feeling better? I had last week there was an issue and you're on one. Yeah, I had an um, infection. So, um, yeah, that's fine. Yes, okay, no, nice to meet you. Muhammad Suleiman? Uh, Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, um, so I'm from Milton Keynes in the UK. Okay, mashallah. And uh, Muhammad Kasuji, that's 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 fine, uh, Muhammad. It's okay. Um, I, I just wanted to um, first of all kind of make it clear that this is not a basic ulum um, hadith class. This is um, uh, an intermediate class. Um, so if you have not uh, done the basics, then some of the discussions might be uh, a, a bit difficult. Um, you probably might not want to be in this class. But we will cover um, the text, inshallah. So uh, that should be fine. Okay. So one of the first things that we do is we'll first start reading the, the ibarat um, or the text of the book, uh, the first paragraph, and then we'll go on to doing some uh, preliminary activities. But before that, um, one of the uh, um, main things that you need to know is you need to know about myself uh, because you know, Isnad is a part of the deen and you should know who you're taking your deen from. So my name is Mansoor Ali. I am originally from um, Oldham, uh, Greater Manchester. I did my um, Alimiyah in, first of all, in Darlum, uh, Birmingham, Coventry Road, and then Darlum, Bury, graduated in uh, year 2000. And then I went on to do kind of postgraduate studies in Al-Azhar University and also uh, did my master's and PhD in Hadith studies at um, Cardiff, uh, sorry, not Cardiff University, Manchester University. Currently, I'm a senior lecturer in Islamic studies at um, Cardiff University, and I, I teach Islamic studies um, or generically, but I um, work on hadith and also I work on bioethics. So these are the kind of two areas um, of my expertise. So that's me. Um, the Nuzha, I've taught it about three, four times now. So it's a book which is quite familiar uh, to me. Um, as I mentioned that this is not a, a basic class, it's an intermediate class. So we will be going into some kind of intermediate um, discussions as well. So let's start reading the book, inshallah, and then <clears throat> we'll come back to some of the, what we call the Mabadiyat or preliminary stuff that we need to know. And I think there is a portal um, I don't know where that portal is, uh, but the admins will tell you if they haven't told you yet, where I will also be posting stuff as well. So um, let me share my screen. Okay. Does anybody want to um, <clears throat> read? Anyone? Anybody volunteer to read? No? Okay, I'll read that. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbi wa sallam. Qala Shaykh al Alama al Ruhla, Shaykh al Islam, Alam al Alam, Shihabuddin, Abu al Fadl, Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Muhammad al Asqalaniyu, al Shahir ibn Hajar al Shafi, Fasahallahu fi muddatihi wa aada ala al Muslimin min barakatihi. الحمد لله الذي لم يزل عالما قديرا حيا قيوما سميعا بصيرا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأكبره تكبيرا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الذي أرسله إلى الناس كافة بشيرا ونذيرا وعلى آل محمد وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد 
So when we say here, Qala Shaykh Qala Shaykh Al Allama Al Ruhla, this this text here, Imam Ibn Hajar cannot be writing this. Okay, somebody else is writing it. It's one of his teachers, uh, sorry, one of his students who is transmitting the book uh, from him, and this is um, where the um, book actually starts. Alhamdulillah, ladi lam yazal aliman qadiran hayyan qayyuman. I'm not going to translate this now. Uh, translate it later. But one word which is important is a ruhla, or ruhla, or some people read it as a rahala, uh, or rahala, can <coughs> mean two things. One is that the one who is well traveled, and he's traveling everywhere, or here it actually means ruhla. Ruhla basically means that the one that people travel to. So he is a scholar who is remaining steadfast in one place and people from all over the place come to visit him. So that's Alama Ar Ruhla. Okay, so we've started the book, inshallah. Um, we'll go to the Mabadiyat now. <clears throat> Can you see this screen? Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, from time to time, you need to engage with me, just so I know that um, you know you are there, or else I'll be just speaking to a screen. Um, whenever we start any discipline, then we need to know three things about that dis discipline. This is called ma yata'allaq bil ilm sharif, ma yata'allaq bil musannif, and ma yata'allaq bil musannaf. Knowledge of the discipline knowledge of the author and knowledge of the book so here i will give you um uh, number one knowledge of the discipline number two i won't tell you too much about knowledge of the author i will give you something that i have written um, about the author published in uh, one of the books of Torah as well so i will give you that chapter on ibn hajar asqalani and then the knowledge of the book um imam ibn hajar Asqalani talks about his own book and talks about the processes. So um, when when we actually study the book, then the, in the relevant places, I can do um, sharh and commentary of that. When we come to ma yata'allaq bil ilm sharif knowledge of the discipline, uh, the very first thing that uh, I would like to draw your attention towards is that um, people translate ulum al-hadith as science of hadith. And that's just a literal translation of the word ilm, uh, um, which is science in English. Um, you know, so ulama are scientists, and it's literally a kind of uh, a reverse engineered word where, where we have ulum al hadith and we're kind of reverse engineering this and calling this science of hadith. I don't um, particularly like this because the word science has a um, particular uh, uh, um, understanding of that, and that is that science is positivist. Positivist basically means that it is fact-driven, it is empirical, it is data-driven, and there is kind of an algorithm there. If you follow all of the rules properly, like mathematics, mathematics is a science, then your conclusion and your natija will exactly be the same every single time. Um, Ulum al-Hadith is basically far from that. And this is why I've specifically said knowledge of the discipline. I rather call it uh, Ulum al-Hadith. I translated the art of doing Hadith because an art is something where there is a, uh, there is a lot of qualitative discretion. Um, and we will see that Ulum al-Hadith is far from uh, what we understand common science to be. Uh, there is a lot of, um, you know, uh, individual discretions and tasarruf involved and uh, treating ulum al-hadith uh, or mustalah al-hadith as a science will actually lead to um, false uh, uh, conclusions and some ulama have actually treated it as a science uh, as a science in the positivist sense and as a result of which they have come out with false conclusions. Uh, one particular scholar, and we will talk about this more, is Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani. He has treated this like an algorithm that if we follow this, 
X, Y, and Z, then we will get a result A, B, C. Uh, unfortunately, it's not um, as simple uh, as that. You need years and years and years of immersion into ulum uh, al-hadith to be able to kind of appreciate what is happening. So it's not only about looking at an isnad of a hadith, going into the biographical literature, and um, then uh, you know, looking at some of the names from Ibn Hajj's taqrib and saying, well, Ibn Hajj said this person is sahih, therefore this is not is sahih. Okay, it's not it's not as simple as that. Although people do that, and Sheikh Nasiruddin Al Bani is has also done that uh, approach. I will I will talk to you more about that. So that's the first thing. Whenever we uh, l- learn anything about a discipline, then we uh, we learn ten things about that. These are primarily coming from Aristotle. So Islamic uh, sciences uh, are infused with kind of Aristotelian ideas. These are known as al-mabadi ul-ashara, or the 10 preliminary things that one needs to know about a uh, a discipline. And this is uh, uh, captured in this you know, uh, couplets and this piece of poetry, Al Mabadi Al Ashara, Inna Mabadi A Kulli Fannin Ashara, Al Haddu Wal Mawdu Uthumma Thamara, Wal Ismu Al Istimdadu Hokmu Shari'i, Fadluhu Wa Nisbatu Al Wadi, Al Masailu Al Badu Bil Badi Ittafa, Waman Dar Al Jami'a, Haza Sharafa. That the preliminaries of all disciplines are ten. Al Had. The definition, al mawdu the subject matter. Thamara is basically the outcomes. Ism, the names. Istimdan, istimdad is auxiliary sciences that will help you to understand that. Hukm al-shari, what is the legal ruling on that? What is the virtues of that? What is the relationship of that science to other uh, kind of disciplines? What is the, who is the founder, originator of that? What are some of its masail? Um, it says, waman dara, waman dara and whoever is able to learn all of these things, then they have truly entered um, or truly got something which is very noble. Uh, are there any questions before we move on? Any questions? No? Okay. None so far. Okay. So let's go to definition al haddu. Uh, the word definition al had literally means a boundary. Okay, and why do you think we need to define? Why do you think we need to define our boundary? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, can someone tell me, please? Why do you think we need to define? Is it um, so that we know what comes within this particular um, heirloom and, and what falls outside of it? Uh, yep. Um, so that, that's 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 exactly the right answer. We know what comes within this ulum and what falls out of it. Uh, but more importantly, um, the terminologies that are used in this ulum um, are not specific to this ulum. The same terminologies are used, or at least the words are used in other disciplines but they mean something else. For example, when we talk about hadith mashhur, yeah, if we look at ulum al-hadith, hadith mashhur means one thing, but if we look at ulum al-hadith in usul al-fiqh, then it means something else. Completely two different things. Khabr wahid, what khabr wahid means in ulum al-hadith is completely different to what it means in usul al-hadith. So we are dealing with similar words, okay, but we are dealing with different meanings. And therefore, we need to understand what that particular word means in within this particular discipline so that there isn't a disciplinary confusion. Um, because these words are ubiquitous, they are used throughout in different uh, um you know, uh, 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 disciplines, um, it is very important that you don't get confused. What is more um, added to the confusion is that the ulama are not compartmentalized. The faqih is also sometimes a muhaddis and an usuli. And uh, the faqih, when he's writing a fiqh book, might basically use a terminology which is a hadith terminology, and by that he actually means a hadith terminology. Whereas the, this same terminology is used in fiqh, but it's used to mean something else. 
but he might be using it as a hadith terminology. So then it becomes really difficult because then you have disciplinary confusion. Um, you, you need to basically look into the text, into the context to understand exactly from what discipline um, this scholar is writing, um, you know, or using this terminology because that's that's the key to understanding the text. Okay, so that's why we need to define the definition of ulumul hadith. So we are not uh, defining hadith here. Can can uh, can somebody tell me what what is the definition of hadith? Very very basically. Anyone? What is the definition of hadith? Yeah. Yeah. Fahad. Any call or fail of Prophet yeah, and uh, so ما ثبت من أقوال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفعله وتقريراته that which is established from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from his words, his uh, doings, and also his silent approval, something that has been done in front of him, and he did not uh, basically do um, you know in care of that. That is according to the fuqaha usul al fiqh, but the muhaddithun go one step forward. Wa uh, wa sifat wa sifatuhu al khalqiya wa al khuluqiya. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's sifats, his physical characteristics, as well as also his uh, inner uh, conduct and characteristics. So that is the definition of hadith. So obviously, um, we need to know that definition. Um, before we could do ulum al hadith, as far as ulum al hadith is concerned, so we are looking at ulum al hadith. Um, Ibn Jama'a, uh, Izzuddin Ibn Jama'a, who was a, um, a teacher of Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he he defined it as ilmun bi qawanin yu'arafu biha ahwal al sanad wal matan. That is a very basic, um, you know, definition. Learning ilmun bi qawanin. It is the knowledge of rules. Ilmun bi qawani. It is the knowledge of rules through which one is able to know the state of the isnad and the state of the matan. Okay, so we do. We all of us understand what isnad and matan is, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, those words are going to come in the in the nuzha, so we will kind of deliberate on them more. So it is basically that is the ilmun bi qawamin yu'arafu biha ahwal sanadi wal matan. It is the it is knowledge of rules. So it is a set of rules through which we know the state of the isnad and we know the state of the matan. Imam al Suyuti rahmatullahi alayhi in his alfiya, alfiya is a thousand. Piece of poetry that he is he has written on the um, the muqaddima of Imam Ibn Salah. In there, he uses the same terminology. Ilm al hadithi dhu qawanin yuhad yudra biha ahwal matanin wa sanad. So this is taken from Ibn Jama'ah. Okay, um, Ibn Hajar uh, al Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, does not define ulum al hadith in nuzha or his book Nukba, but he has another book called An nukat Ala Ibn Salah, where he is basically critiquing some of the points of Imam Ibn Salah in his Muqaddimah. Um, he says, Ma'rifatul qawa'id allati yutuwassalu biha ila ma'rifati hali rawi wal marwi. It is knowledge of the rules through which one is able to reach knowledge of the state of the rawi and what the rawi has narrated, i.e. the matan. Okay, which is in a way exactly the same thing as what his teacher Izz ibn Jama'a is saying. Izz ibn Jama'a's one is less mouthful. Ilmun bi qawanin yu'rafu biha ahwalu sanadi wal matan. So that's simple. It is the ilm by which one is able to ascertain whether the Prophet ﷺ said the hadith or not. So what is the sole purpose? And, and as, as, as long as you can get this and understand this and process this now, it will be very beneficial for you in the future. What if, you, if, if somebody was to say to me, what is the crux of ulum al-hadith? Then the way that I will answer that is that the ulum al-hadith is doing nothing more than trying to establish whether the Prophet said whatever is purported to be reported from him or not. 
So when we say qala an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam inma al-a'mal bin-niyat what ulum al-hadith is doing is trying to establish whether the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said it or not that's all ulum al-hadith primarily does not deal with the meaning of a hadith although sometimes here and there in shawaz uh, uh, and there they deal with the meaning of hadith but that's as far as trying to ascertain whether that word was said by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or not so in that way uh, so when we say a hadith is sahih what do we mean by a hadith is sahih what we mean by a hadith is sahih is all we can say is that we can say with confidence that this hadith is coming from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we say a hadith is weak what that basically means is that we can't say with confidence that that hadith is coming from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam however it's not that we can for us to reject it in every single instance so in that sense the muhaddithun are really like critical historians or investigative journalists what they doing is they are trying to ascertain whether the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something or not and this is why there is a, a very much emphasis on form um the, the, the how the uh, hadith is established rather than looking into the matan and what the hadith means what the hadith means is the uh, purview and it is the subject of usul al fiqh or sharh al hadith okay that's where you take so if a hadith is sahih all it basically means is that we can we, we are confident that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it we are not making any claims about what the hadith means that comes later all we are establishing is that, that yes we are confident that this is coming from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there are rules okay there are rules of ascertaining okay there are rules of ascertaining uh, because we don't have any uh, contemporary reports the prophet sallam didn't write a book there isn't any recording there isn't any video recording okay then what we what we have is different methods of ascertaining primarily oral primary oral but not uh, um, 100% oral and and that's all it is that that is ulum al hadith right ulum al hadith is qawa ilm bi qawanin yu'rafu bi ahwal al sanad what is the nature of the what is the status of the sanad and as a result of this what is the status of the matan is that okay any questions before we move on no sir <clears throat> Sheikh, what what was the extra step which muhaddisin considered for hadith? Say that again. Uh, what was the extra condition which muhaddisin uh, considered for hadith? Oh, the definition of hadith. Yeah. Yeah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's sifats, his physical characteristics, and also his qualities in uh, his internal qualities. Where well, the fuqaha do not actually uh, uh, take those into considerations. Yeah, in their okay. definition. Okay. Different different names uh, of of different names. Uh, number one, the first name is ulum al hadith. Yeah, um, and and the word ulum al hadith is um, uh, it became popularized by Imam Taqiyuddin Ibn Salah, who is a sixth century scholar, and we will see Ibn Salah later on quite a bit. Um, he wrote a book called Ma'rifatu Anwa'i Ulum al Hadith, in which he collected sixty five. different ulum that he calls um uh, into one book and that's where um, you know so if these ulums are related to the hal of the rawi the names of the rawi the status of the isnad if there's a break in the isnad or not uh, some terminologies okay so that's that is called ulum al hadith uh, <clears throat> uh, then we have mustalah al hadith Uh, or also istilah uh, al-hadith and this is nuzhat an-nazar sharh nukhbat al-nukhbat nuzhat an-nazar sharh nukhbat al-fikr fi fi istilah ahli al-athar okay 
مصطلح الحديث او اصطلاح اصطلاح الحديث بيسيكلي مينز ذا تيرمينولوجيز اوف اوف حديث سو تيرمينولوجيز بيسيكلي وي جست ديلينج وذ تيرمينولوجيز وات از صحي وات از حسن وات از حديث وات از ضعيف وات از موضوع سو ذس اولسو از نون از مصطلح الحديث اوكي اصول الحديث um is uh, is something which is common in the later period and also in the indo pak uh, uh, bangladeshi uh, south asian subcontinent everybody calls this usul al hadith we read usul al hadith but actually usul al hadith is something uh, which is not mentioned uh, this science is not known as usul al hadith uh, by the 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 um, ulama al mutaqaddini mean and, and also the mutaakhirin it also it's a it's, it's a very kind of an indian uh, uh, south asian kind of concept where there's usul al fiqh then then we basically say usul al tafsir right and then we say uh, usul al hadith actually there's no such thing as usul al tafsir um it, as, as a discipline is ulum al quran okay there's no such thing as usul al hadith as a discipline is ulum al hadith okay but it's it's something that has become uh you know uh, mashhur on people's tongues and then uh, from there we have like uh, also different sciences or different disciplines or uh, um, subcategories ilm al jarh wa ta'dil ilm al jarh wa ta'dil deals with uh, criticisms of rawis and then ilm al rijal and these things i'm just going uh, very quickly through this but we will um, do this in more details ilm al rijal is the knowledge of um, you know narrators and you find these in um tabaqat and biographical dictionaries okay lexicons such as tahzib al kamal tahzib al tahzib mizan al i'tidal sayr a'lam al nubala ibn hajar taqrib al tahzib etc it is also known as ilm al riwaya as opposed to ilm al diraya which is basically more about the knowledge of the text of the hadith what the hadith means uh, but here is more to do with the riwaya how do we ascertain that a hadith is um, actually coming from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the subject matter the subject matter of hadith what is it that we we actually uh, will be looking at so again is ibn jama'a mentions as-sanadu wal matanu min haith al-qubul wal rad as-sanadu wal matanu we will look at the sanad and the matan from the point of view of whether they should be accepted or whether they should be rejected and that's what it is so this is what i was talking about it is not about what the hadith means um ulum al hadith is about ascertaining whether the prophet said it or not okay and therefore what we are looking in ulum al hadith is whether this hadith is accepted or whether this hadith is to be rejected okay this is the subject matter. so this is like if you've gone through university or college then you'll know that when you are uh, um choosing a um you know uh, a, a module to do then you look at the module description you look at basically uh, what you will study you look at the learning outcomes etc so this is exactly the same thing yeah so the learning outcome a thamara so the learning outcome is number one is knowledge regarding the text of the hadith you will have knowledge regarding the text of the hadith from the point of view of whether it should be accepted or whether it should be rejected knowledge regarding the chain of transmission the chain the isnad whether the isnad is suitable or is not uh, knowledge of accepted and rejected hadith and then show not and all of that why do we need to do all of that because at the end of the day we need to know whether we should practice this hadith or not whether we should uh follow what is being said in this hadith or not so show knowledge in emulating the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we will have knowledge of whether actually the prophet sallallahu alaihi so, so we find a hadith that man akala al bazinjan qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam man akala al bazinjan dakhala al jannah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said who, whoever eats aubergines will go to jannah yeah um so do we then go and eat aubergines um and then we will go to jannah in doing ittiba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we need to know the status of the hadith 
Okay, um, and then when we look into the state of the hadith, we find that this hadith is fabricated. Okay, it was it, it was made by a green grocer who wasn't selling his aubergines, and he wanted people to buy aubergines, so he just fabricated the hadith. So by learning these signs, what you have is you have more sure knowledge in emulating the life of the Prophet. Are you really? You know, uh, emulating the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I mean, man akal al bazinjan, dakhal al jannah is an extreme example, but there are like other examples. For example, in um, now we are in Rajab. Uh, in some of the books, uh, there is there, there are books of fadail. There, are, there is mentioned salatul raghaib. Salatul raghaib is basically a, a, a hundred rakat uh, salat that is done at the end of Rajab. is also sometimes known as the Rajabiya. What is the legal status of that? You know, what is the legal status of um, you know kissing the prophet, uh, kissing your thumbs and putting it on the eyes after listening to the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? This is found in some ahadith. Are we emulating the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So you know, you you get these um, understanding of um, whether you are correctly emulating the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or not. Supplementary uh, science. So uh, at the moment um, of learning, is still so because we are still in the beginning. Even though I'm saying it's intermediate, um, it's important that you just know the istilahat and really not go into ilmul rijal and jarhat adil. You should only go into ilmul rijal and jarhat adil once you have kind of mastered ulumul uh, hadith uh, and mastered the mustalahul hadith. One of the things that you will notice in reading the uh, mustalahul hadith and the nuzha is that there is no mujma'alai or majma'alai qawaneen or qawaeed. There is no kind of uh, standard qaida on any particular issue that the muhaddithun all follow. So when they say that the hadith is sahih, everybody agrees that the hadith is sahih. Uh, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, agrees on hadith sahih. And when you say, what are the conditions of a sahih hadith? They say, well, a sahih hadith uh, needs five conditions for a hadith to be uh, sahih. Adalatul rawi, dabtul rawi, ittisalu sanad, adamu shuzuz, adamu illa. These are the five conditions. And we'll talk about this. I'm just very uh, saying it very fast. Um, Okay, so nobody disagrees with that. But when it comes to, okay, let's take the first condition, Adalatul Rawi, that the Rawi has to be morally upright. Okay, that's when there is ikhtilaf amongst the scholars. Right? How do we ascertain Adala? Right? Is a person who's a bid'ati, does he have Adala or not? If a person basically had corrupt ideology, corrupt belief, does he have adala or not? Some people will say yes, some people will say no. If a person was known to eat uh, a, a walking outside and whilst eating, does he have adala or not? Some people will say yes, or some people will say no. Right? Um, what is a shah's uh, hadith? Some people will say a shah's is when a thika rawi opposes a more arjah rawi. Others will say, no, Shaz is just mutlaq mukhalafa. So the, the point here is that there is no kind of ijma on these mustalahat. And, uh, and the way that you know, the way that you should learn these is to first of all, know what the istilah says, and then learn the istilah according to each individual scholar. That's the only way. So what does Imam Bukhari mean? by this? What does Imam Ahmed mean by this? What does Imam Ibn Ma'in mean by this? What does Imam Tirmizi mean by this? That's the only way. This is why I, I say that this is not an algorithm. It's not mathematical where you input certain you know, uh, uh, algorithms and then you'll churn out a result because everybody is using these terminologies differently. And this is, this is why it's very difficult. It takes years because you need to learn everybody's terminology, even though they might be using the same words to, uh, uh, to use the terminologies. Yeah. Any questions before we move on? Okay, Supple supplementary sciences, istimdad, what are the... What are the uh, other sciences that you need to know? So sometimes, you know, when you have a university course, 
a, a module might be restricted to you. Um, you know, you are not allowed to take this module if you've not taken a previous module. Okay, so this is called pathway. So similarly, what are the pathways? What are the uh, what are the sciences? What are the ulum? I've got sciences because this is uh, old. Uh, my views have changed. I don't like to call them sciences anymore. Uh, but you will see that I sometimes say sciences because it's still in the force of habit. So first of all, you need to know hadith. Okay, um, for that because we are we are dealing with. Uh, um, you know, establishing whether the Prophet said something or not, and there will be examples from the hadith. So at least you need to know some hadith. Um, there will be some fiqhi discussions coming up as well, so you need to know a basic fiqhi discussions. There will be some usuli usulul fiqh discussions coming up as well, so you need to know. So again, there is some kind of osmosis going on. Um, obviously, you will need to know Arabic. Um, you know, there are very good. Uh, ulum al hadith books now written in english the entire muqaddama of ibn salah has been translated uh, into english by somebody called eric dickinson it's actually a good translation the nukhba is translate is translated by um uh, sheikh musa mufti musa ferber uh, which is a good uh, translation um the uh, the Nuzha, there is a PhD thesis by Dr. Atar Hussein, um, which is quite good, but again, it's a PhD thesis and it's not published. I am actually in the process of writing a commentary and, and translation of um, the the Nuzha. It is it is not it is not a project that I'm working on uh, actively. It's whenever I get some time, I, I translate a line here and there. So, um, but there are some good uh, uh, English books out there, but English books will only take you to a certain level and then you'll have to stop because um, as you will know that some of these discussions require that you understand the nuances of the Arabic language and without understanding the nuances of the Arabic language you will not be able to understand what's happening and also you need to have a bit of uh, a dollop of prudence as well um, if you don't have prudence and you will not uh, uh, you know it'll be quite difficult for you okay Fadila, what is the virtue of this? So this will come under the, um, you know, uh, uh, the general fadila of hadith uh, because, uh, uh, you know, you are still dealing with hadith so you're trying to work with hadith and, that's, uh, and, and so the general uh, kind of, um, you know, Fadil of Hadith. So if you want to look at the Fadil of Hadith, there's a brilliant book written by Imam, Abd Imam Ibn Abdul Bal, Jami Ubayani Al-Ilmi Wa Fadlihi. Yeah. I will be also throwing a lot of names and a lot of names of books and a lot of names of people. Uh, you cannot be a Hadith scholar if you don't remember names and if you don't remember names of books. Jami' Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadlihi by Imam Ibn Abdul Bar. It's a good book. Um, you should read it. Yeah. Um, so some of the Fadila is generic Fadila, Naddarullahum Ra'an Sami'a Maqalati, Fahafidaha, Wa Wa'aha, Wa Addaha, Farubba Hamil Fikin Ila Gayri Fakih, Wa Rubba Hamil Fikin Ila Manhua Afkahumin. Uh, this is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and here there is an ikhtilaf, difference of opinion amongst the muhaddithun and the fuqaha uh, who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking about because he said, Allah man sami'a maqalati fahafidaha wa wa'aha wa addaha This is talking about transmission of hadith, the muhaddithun say but, However, the fuqaha say فَرُبَّ حَامِنِ فِقْهٍ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ فَقِّهِ وَرُبَّ حَامِنِ فِقْهٍ إِلَىٰ مَنْ هُوَ أَفْقَهُ مِنْ is talking about the benefits of uh, fiqh. So this can be used for both. Similarly, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala says, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ اللَّهُمَّ رَحَمْ خُلَفَائِي قُلْنَا وَمَنْ خُلَفَاءُكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ أَلَّذِينَ يَرُونَ أَحَادِيثِي وَيُعَلِّمُونَهَا النَّاسِ So it comes within the general ambit of the ahadith. However, the ulum al-hadith can also, uh, one can do it theoretically. Yeah, one can do it theoretically without having any effect on 
your iman or effect on your, uh, you know, um, on the hadith or your practice, you can just do it theoretically, theoretically for the sake of theoretically. So you can basically get, you know, let's say one hadith inam al amal bin niyat, and you can collect hundred different isnads for that. Okay, um, some one person uh, he talks about himself and he says that he collected uh, kind of like a thousand isnad for a hadith. Uh, just for one hadith, he collected a thousand isnads for it, and then he had a dream where he saw Yahya ibn Ma'in in his dream, and he presented the research to Yahya ibn Ma'in, and Yahya ibn Ma'in said to him, "Akhafu uh, an takuna." Uh, uh, he says, "I fear that this is subsumed under al-hak al-hakum al-hakum hatta zurtum al-maqabir." The takathur uh, extreme. Uh, 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 infatuation with something has destroyed people that you know you don't need to look for a thousand isnads for a hadith so one can also go going into this too much into the theoretical of the hadith can go, can go down a rabbit hole and kind of look into uh, very very nuanced uh, um, you know discussions uh, on that I mean I'm I'm particularly interested in uh, in ulum al hadith, also from a theoretical perspective, I'm reading quite a lot of. Uh, so, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll I'll tell you in in a bit. Hukm uh, al What is the hukm legal ruling of the shari? It is mustahab. Um, and we'll get rid of this because that was from yeah. It is it is a mustahab, or you can basically say it is wajib upon one person from the community, like any other. Um, the originator. Um, uh, it started off with the companions and then grew gradually with hadith itself. We'll talk about that when we go into the um, uh, the nuzha itself. It's because Imam Ibn Hajar talks about the history. Its position amongst the other religious knowledge, its position comes next to hadith in the sense that it is one of those things. Uh, it's like naho and sarf. It is an auxiliary science. In order to be able to understand hadith properly, um, then you will need to um, know ulum al-hadith. Some of its masails, um we will look at some of these messiahs, so we'll leave that. Types of engagement with hadith. So these are just some kind of terminologies. Um, a rawi or a musnid. A rawi or a musnid, one who is involved in collecting and documenting hadith. Yeah. Hafiz or muhaddis is one who is involved in sifting through hadith or commenting on hadith. Okay, so the rawi is involved in collecting and documenting uh, hadith. Hafiz or Musnid is one who is involved in sifting through hadith or commenting on hadith. Okay, types of research you can do dirasatul asanid, uh, you can study the isnad, or you can basically just do takhrij of a hadith. Takhrij basically means referencing hadith, and also you can do tashrih or you can do sharah. So um, when I uh, you know, so I studied in Darul Ulum, then I went to, um, you know, Al Azhar University. And if I was to kind of give you the difference between what is taught in Darul Ulum in Hadith and what is taught in, um, you know, uh, Al Azhar in Hadith, then in the Darul Ulum, we emphasize more on the tashrih of the Hadith. What does this Hadith mean? And especially uh, coming from a Hanafi institution, primarily, um, you know, it's ex explaining hadith from the point of view of Hanafi fiqh. Okay, um, hardly there is any discussions on takhrij or dirasatul asanid. Um, in Azhar, it was it was opposite. There was hardly any discussion on tashrih. Uh, we did we did have uh, um, you know a tashrih of a hadith, but that wasn't like the way that you do in in the Darul Ulum, where you go through the entire book. At least in, not not in the um, in, in the bachelor's degree in the BA, um, they don't go through the entire book, Sana uh, al-Muttasil, from the beginning to the end in Al-Azhar. They expect you to read it. What they do do is they uh, teach you how to do takhrij. But nowadays with Shamila and all, all the other computer-assisted programs, um, that's kind of become redundant, but still takhrij uh, of how to look at. So when Imam Suyuti uh, in his Jami al-Kabir and Jami al-Saqir, he's writing, he's using certain terminologies. What do these terminology mean? Sheikh Ali Muttaqi and Kanzul, uh, Kanzul Ummal, he is basically using certain uh, abbreviations. What do these abbreviations mean? Um, also, they teach you how to do dirasatul asanid, how to uh, 
um, you know, study the isnad, and a lot of it was they teach you the method and then tell you to kind of write dissertation. So that was the kind of uh, two different uh, types of scholarship uh, amongst the Darsan Nizami, but also in the uh, Azhari system. There are some uh, terminologies here. Hafiz, Hakim, Muhaddis, Mufid, Mustamli. The Hafiz uh, is the one who knows 100,000 hadiths, Sanadan and Matanan. They say Hakim is the one who knows every single hadith that is available, Sanadan and Matanan. So Hakim, uh, Imam Hakim and Nisapuri, Abu Ali and Nisapuri, the author of Mustadrak. Muhaddis is somebody whose profession is a hadith. A Mufid is, uh, 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 is someone who is like you know in um when when our mics break down and in in the prayer and it's a big prayer like say juma and then you have people who are mukabbir who who are far away but they imitate the allahu akbar samiyallahu liman hamida rabbana lak alhamd of the iman do they call that mukabbir so that everybody can hear so this is the mufid the mufid imagine you have a, like a uh uh jamaat of a uh, thousand people coming to listen to Ibn Hajar uh, do um, hadith. Um, obviously, the, they didn't have mic system. So what they had is they had these mufids, you know, posited in different places. And these mufids will paraphrase what uh, Ibn Hajar or, or the muhaddithun was saying. So they were like the mukabbir, but also they were ulama as well. Um, so they probably will have, they will probably be students of the muhaddith and they will have their uh, notes from the students, uh, from the teacher beforehand. Mustamli is someone who's uh, quite good at taking uh, taking notes. Um, there is a, uh, there, there are kind of a number of movements uh, that are happening um, within the um, scholarship of uh, ulum al-hadith uh, scholarship. And uh, one of the first to have, um, so num number one is there is a um, kind of uh, a um, an understanding that the ulum al-hadith that we have today, Ibn Hajar and others that we are reading, actually, this is all Shafi'i usul al-fiqh, the sunnah section of Shafi'i usul al-fiqh. And therefore, and the reason why uh, these ulum al-hadith has become quite famous is because nearly all of the ulum al-hadith writers, the muhaddithun, they were shafi'is, say Imam al-Nawawi, uh, who's written at taqrib and Al-Irshad, Imam Ibn Salah, uh, who's written the Muqaddim Ibn Salah, uh, Imam Iraqi, who's written Al-Fiyya and Al-Tabsira, um, you know, Imam Al-Suyuti, who's written, uh, you know, um, multiple books uh, on, you know, Usul al-Hadith, Ulum al-Hadith, Imam Ibn Hajar, Khatib Baghdadi, Imam Al-Bayhaqi, you know, all of these, or most of these were Shafi'i scholars, and therefore they kind of pushed a, uh, you know, like a Shafi'i uh, kind of agenda. Um, and therefore, there are some people who are um, trying to uh, uh, um, wrestle ulum al-hadith from the Shafi'is and write independent studies on, um, you know, like a Hanafi uh, ulum al-hadith and a Maliki ulum al-hadith. Uh, so Shafi'i and Hanbali ulum al-hadith go hand, to, uh, hand in hand together. But a Maliki ulum al-hadith or a Shafi'i usul al-hadith or ulum al-hadith. There are these uh, kind of discussions happening. One of the first to have done uh, done that was Isa ibn Aban. Isa ibn Aban, who was a student of Imam Muhammad al-Shaybani, uh, um, the student of Imam Abu Hanifa, he 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 wrote a a, a a response, a critique of Imam Shafi's Risala, especially on the Hadith section. Um, so a lot of people take their cue from there. Um, in English, we have the only book uh, which is by um, Sheikh Atabek Shukruf, who was a Hanafi methodology of doing ulum al Hadith. It's all right. It's not very good. It's not still very well thought out. Um, there is my work on the. Uh, Muqaddimah of the I'la'u Sunan uh, 
uh, which is published by Toros. I've written a bit about it. I have a PhD student at the moment who is looking at Imam Saraksi's uh, understanding of ulum al-Hadith. Imam Saraksi was a Hanafi. Uh, um, there is there is the uh, the master dissertation by uh, um, somebody called at Turkumani. Uh, Abdul Majid Turkumani, Ulum al Hadith and Manhaj al Naqti and al Ahnaf. And then there's very recently um, a, um, a book that's just come out from Ibn Khaldun University. Um, this book, uh, it just literally came out last month called Dirasa fi Naqd al Hadithi and al Usuliyin. Um, I've read it, it's not very. Um, deep is just sorcery superficial so up to yet um, there hasn't been a a kind of um a kind of uh, you know on on the level of imam shafi's risala there hasn't been a detailed uh, uh, study on uh, why we should have a Hanafi uh, ulum al-Hadith. I mean, uh, Sheikh Sharif Hatim al Auni, one of the greatest Hadith scholars living today, a Saudi scholar, um, he is completely, I mean, I asked him when he came back in 2017, he asked him about this, and he basically said, this is all bakwas. Uh, there is no such thing as a Shafi'i ulum al-Hadith and a Hanafi ulum al-Hadith. He's vehemently against it. Uh, um, and he has a, a, a book where uh, called Al-Manhaj al-Muqtarah, um, the way he critiques these positions. So there's there are, there's this discussion going on on whether uh, we should have different types of ulum al hadith. Um, and uh, I, I, I mean, I'm writing uh, also another book on this, not actively writing, but I'm collecting materials on that. There is another uh, discussion that is happening, which is that the um, the ulum al hadith that we have. Um, that basically uh, has, you know, it's it, it's it's a science uh, or it's a discipline that has expanded. Okay, it's a discipline that has expanded, and terminology, new terminologies, and new meanings have developed uh, to the extent that what one terminology meant, uh, according to the mutaqaddimin, according to the early scholars. Um, that means something else to the mutaakhirin, and from the mutaakhirin is Imam Ibn Hajar. For example, the definition of shaz, um, what that meant to Imam Ibn Hajar, didn't that same thing didn't mean uh, uh, it didn't mean the same thing to let's say Imam Muslim. What uh, um, you know, tadlis meant to Imam Muslim, it it doesn't mean the same to Imam uh, um, Ibn Hajar Asqalani. And this is why Sheikh Nasruddin Al Albani was able to declare 152 riwayats of Sahih Muslim to be weak because Abu Zubair he narrates from uh, Jabir radiAllahu taala who Mu'an an Hadith and Jabir is a mudallis. So he says Jabir, uh, sorry, Abu Zubair is a mudallis. Abu Zubair and Jabir and says uh, the Mu'an of the mudallis is not accepted. So he declares it weak. But why he doesn't understand is that he's using a later development of Tadlis uh, and he's, he, he's superimposing that on an early uh, um, understanding of Tadlis. Another one is Mursal. Um, Mursal, according to Imam Shafi'i and Imam Ahmed the Hanbal, is not accepted, according to Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam uh, Malik, is, it is accepted. And therefore, if somebody basically charges the Hanafis for accepting a Mursal Hadith, so, well, well, we accept the Mursal Hadith anyway. Yeah, we don't follow your uh, your usul. So there is a, a another kind of movement happening, which is almost like a you know, like the uh, in the Salafis basically say that we need to bypass all of the madhahib and go back to the Quran and Sunnah. So this uh, madhab uh, or this this uh, uh, this sorry, not madhab. This movement basically is saying we need to bypass everything that came after Imam Ibn, Sal uh, Ibn Salah and go back to the original, the Mutaqaddimin, um, um, and see how they did Ulum al-Hadith. So, so people like Hamza Abdullah Malibari, a South uh, Indian uh, scholar from uh, Kerala, um, he's one of the leading scholars in that. I think he lives in Jordan now, or Abu Dhabi. Last I heard he was in Jordan, but I think he was in Abu Dhabi. Uh, um, so he's a, so Al-Manhaj al-Naqt uh, uh, Al-Mutaqaddimin. So they're trying to kind of go back to the mutaqaddimin. Similarly, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Sharif Hatim al Auni is also of the Sheikh Abdullah al Jidai in his Tahrir is also trying to do that. So that's there's that kind of um, you know movement also happening. There's also a third movement that is happening, which is or that's already happened is um, 
which is kind of using usul al fiqh discussions to kind of look into uh, into hadith and uh, this is uh, found you know amongst uh, uh, primarily the ulama of azhar uh, if you look at the works of sheikh yusuf al qardawi if you look at the works of sheikh muhammad al ghazali uh, um, uh, uh, you know his his book as sunnah bayna ahl al uh, uh, um, you know, he's, he's written this and then Sheikh Mustafa Maraghi and others from the ulama of Azhar that they have, I mean, I've, I've written about this um, in a 30 page article on these new kind of terminology, uh, new kind of movements. I can share it on the, on, on the, um, you know, port, portal um, if you want. So these are, these are kind of new. Now there are also um, so, so, uh, now new movements, but this is not within um, kind of mainstream Islam or mainstream tradition Islam, but this is more in academia. There are kind of statistical methodologies which are being used, you know, like so, so the theories of probabilities are being used to kind of ascertain whether a hadith is, uh, um, you know, statistically whether it's coming from the Prophet وسلم, or not. There are computer simulations and modulations uh, that are being used, computer assisted software that are being used. But this is more quantitative uh, to ascertain whether probabilistically, well, that's not happening within. Um, Muslim circles is happening in academic circles. Um, so I'm also plugged into that uh, um, conversation as well. So these are some of the kind of uh, fascinating stuff that is happening. But in order to be able to kind of understand those fascinating stuff, um, you need to basically first know uh, the basics. And then from the basics, um, you can then um, move on to kind of more advanced stuff, um, inshallah. So I have spoken for an hour. Um, we have half an hour left, so I will open up the floor um, to any questions. Please post questions either through, um, you know, um, on the chat or just talk to me directly. Well, a quick question. Um, you mentioned um, Isa Ibn Aban, he wrote a critique on, was it Imam Shafi's Risala? Uh, so, sorry, say that again. Uh, Isa ibn Aban, you, you said he wrote a critique. Was he on Imam Shafi's Risala? Yeah, bits of the Risala, not the entire Risala. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so is, is, was that your question? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's another scholar, Maliki scholar by the name of Ibn al -Abbad. Ibn al Abbad also wrote a similar critique of Imam Shafi's uh, Risala or that bit on Hadith. Yeah. He's a Maliki scholar, Ibn al Abbad. Okay. Any other questions? No, Fahad Muhammad Suleiman? This is, this is more of a personal one, but from the yeah. points you mentioned, the different kind of discussions going on at the moment, what, what do you find the most, or, or A, what, what do you find the most interesting, and B, what would you, th what, what would you say is the, or has the potential to be the most impactful on this, you know, on, on this subject matter? It's quite interesting. I, I, as an academic, I am kind of interested in the discussion itself. I'm not taking any sides, just to kind of like uh, look into the discussions and seeing the arguments from each side. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing though. Um, in, the, in the madrasas, um, Dars and Hizami madrasas, we are taught Hanafi fiqh and also we are taught Hadith. Now, uh, what happens is that um, the Hadith is, all of the hadiths are primarily written based on a high, kind of like a uh, the ulum al hadith methodology, if you want to call it the Shafi methodology, and that's why you find that a lot of the ahadith of Sahih al Bukhari does not conform to the Hanafi, um, you know, um, madhab, and therefore we have to do kind of gymnastics and acrobatics in order to kind of explain it away or bring it within the uh, um, uh, make it tolerable to Hanafis. Um, what that basically shows is that uh, ulama who are coming out, um, they have 
disciplinary confusion. They are trying to do the same discipline, which is hadith, using two different methodologies. And there are disciplinary confusion. And that's why a lot of the times our kind of like, uh, uh, there's an students, we get confused. I mean, Sheikh Atabek Shukruf talks about it quite straightforward. And he basically says that nowadays the Hanafi scholars who are being produced by the madrasas, they're kind of Salafis in the sense that they're taking on this kind of hadith methodology. They don't even use Hanafi methodology. And he says, if you want to be a true Hanafi, then you need to get rid of the ulum al-hadith. <laughs> um, um, and you need to follow the usul hadith of the uh, uh, of the ahnaf, and th there you will have a consistent methodology. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, certainly, what is happening now is that there is amongst the ulama there is an awareness of um, you know that there might be two different methodologies. As far as the impact is concerned, I mean, I, I mean, I raised this question with, um, I, I reviewed a book uh, written, uh, it's an edited book um, that came out of Oxford uh, by somebody called Bilal Abbas. And there's an article in there by Mu'taz al-Khatib. And the Mu'taz al-Khatib is talking about these new uh, uh, kind of developments and Hanafi methodology and Shafi'i methodology. So I reviewed that book. Uh, I can send you the review if you want. Um, in there, I, I, I kind of question Mu'taz al-Khatib, right? Okay, what is the practical implications of that? Now, Bukhari is seen as a sahul kutub ba'da kitabillah, right? It's uh, the most sahih. Uh, if we, how would Sahih al-Bukhari look if we were to kind of use a Hanafi methodology on that? Um, you know, would we say that some of the ahadiths we will have to declare them to be weak? Um, and, and then be going beyond that, even your Hanafi ulama, would they accept that there are weak ahadiths in Sahih al-Bukhari? Um, so I, I don't know what the implications of that is. I mean, certainly, um, the, the, there is there is an implication for that, um, which I don't know f f for better or, for, or, or is it for worse. Um, it will certainly challenge the canonicity of the Sahihain, right? Um, there will be so many ahadiths that will have to be declared weak in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim if we were to, you know, so there will be a certain impact. I don't know if it's for better or for worse. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Um, Salman Saab, do we is she, because we have half an hour, shall we carry on with the book or Yahya Yahya by or uh, what do we do? Because there are no more questions. I think we should uh, wrap up. Okay. Jazakum Allah khair. Then So one 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 more question, please. Um, the the edition of the text that you're reading from, I've got a dollar which is um, yeah. different in terms of its text um, from what you recited or what are you reading from? Which one are you using? Um, so the, 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 so I am using a text. Uh, am I still sharing my screen? I'm not, am I? Okay, I mean, I, I, I can share this one so that we, uh, I mean, Darul Kutub al try to kind of not use stuff from Darul uh, Kutub al uh because they're not good generally. This is this text, I can share it with you. It's not the best of the text, there are some mistakes, but I just like the layout of this text. It's by um, uh, Abdullah ibn Daif of Daifullah al ruhaili from Medina Munawwara. Uh, um, I just like the, um, you know, the layout of it. It's quite easy to follow. Um, the best, let's get back. Yeah, so it's 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 got good hashia and it's it's got all these numbering, so it's quite quite good to follow. The 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 best and the most authoritative uh, um, nuskha that we have is the nuskha of Sheikh Nuruddin Atar, uh, which is this one here. Um, this one, this is the best one. Um, it's, it's the most kind of authoritative. He, he com, uh, compiled, used a number of manuscripts. Um, Maktabatul Bushra, this is the best uh, that we have um, on this. The problem is that it's an ISO, and that's why I don't use it for teaching. Um, you can see that. Hold on. You can see that it's an ISO. Uh, 
um, it's just too much text. So, uh, and it's quite small. So it's not, uh, as a pedagogical text, it's not too good. I like this one uh, because it's more spaced out and there's more kind of numbering systems and, and barbs on the side. So uh, I, I can, um, uh, you know, Yahya Sab, do we have a portal for this where we can upload all this stuff? Yes, we do. And inshallah, we'll share that with the students and I'll share that with you later on as well. I'll ask Muhammad to share it with you. Okay. And um, yeah, so there are also certain things that I want the students to read before the next class uh, as preparations, uh, inshallah. So I'll share all of those uh, as well. Inshallah. Barakallah, Barak I will see you all. Uh, are there any other questions before we, yes. you know, we. G, so, Fahad. Can, can you also share the document regarding various movements which you mentioned? Uh, okay, inshallah. All the documents that I mentioned, I will I will share those. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah, hereby we're free to close the class. Yes. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the homework, Sheikh, which you said uh, we should read? Say that again. Uh, what's the homework you said? Uh, because yeah, so th th there will be some stuff that I will upload onto the portal. I don't know where that is, uh, but you will get access to that portal and you just need to read uh, those before you come to class. So one of them will be Imam Ibn Hajj's biography. Um, and then there will be like two stuff from uh, um, uh, another one is the Muqaddimah of I'ala Sunan, which is also published by Turas. And then there's another article that I've written on Hadith, uh, which you should read before we come to the class. Okay. Okay. Jazakum Allah khair. In that class, we will, uh, case, we will close the class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.